Hello again, everyone. I'm Larry Hamilton. Welcome to my YouTube painting channel. Thank you for watching. Today we're going to do a uh, watercolor painting, and it's a scene that I've actually painted once before a long time ago, and I actually sold the painting at an art show, so I wanted to try to do it again. Um, so it's a, uh, it's a, it's a uh, lighthouse scene. It's called the Big Big Sable Point Lighthouse. It's located in Ludington, Michigan. And I've been there, I've photographed it, I've painted it, and uh, I'll do it again for you guys today. So I hope you like it. What I want to do is go through my paints and brushes, as I always do, and show you the, uh, the uh, brushes that I'm using and the uh, paints that I'm using. So uh, here we are now with my palette. This is my, <clears throat> this is my Sterling Edwards palette. And... Uh, I have my Sterling Edwards set of brushes, uh, a bristle brush here that I use, a one, one inch blender. I have a couple of flats, a one inch flat, a half inch flat. Uh, a few rounds, three rounds, number 12, number eight, number four, and I have a little script liner here um, at, as uh, part of that set. I also have a few mop brushes, quill mop brushes from Trakel, trakel.com. I use those infrequently, but I may use them today, I don't know. I don't know which of these I'll use, but certainly that's the brush set that I have. So let's go around the uh, palette now and go through the paints. My standard palette so far of My Mary Blue watercolors is, um, this is neutral tint. This is permanent blue cyan. This is ultra marine blue. This is permanent violet bluish. This is Crimson Lake. I have... Um, Primary Red Magenta, Cadmium Red, Burnt Sienna, Raw Sienna, Yellow Ochre, Cupric Green, Sap Green, Limon Yellow, Primary Yellow, Burnt Umber, Still the Grain Brown, Ovignon Orange. I have a few colors over here that I probably won't use all. These are a couple of gouaches. This is a black and a white gouache. Um, I have cadmium orange and cerulean blue that I've been playing around with some, and I have uh, titanium white and lamp black as uh, my, uh, or I'm sorry, lamp black here and titanium white there. So that is the colors, and uh, that's what we're going to be working with. And uh, so now let's go back to the easel, and I'll get going on this painting for you. And hopefully uh, when I Mark some of this out. You won't be able to see this lighthouse too well, but uh, it'll be there enough for me to see it so I know uh, what I'm doing, but it does kind of eliminate it for you. Uh, so I'll take some of this graphite off here. I don't want it to show up in my final painting any more than I have to. Sometimes these uh, pencil marks are okay, but um, I tend to like to take at least take some of the edge off by taking some of it out before we start. So that's what I'm doing. Okay. That's probably good enough. Okay. So take a little bit out. You can still see some of the marks up here, but uh, that's going to be fine. All right. Let's get going here on this. I'm going to use my big one inch blending brush and uh, I'll put some water on this surface here um, to get it wet. I want to put this sky in. It's a nice soft blue sky. I go back to my original photos and try to find the, colors that I would like to use. I don't have to use the colors that are in the photo, but sometimes they're really nice, particularly on paintings like this where you've got a nice blue sky to work with. <clears throat> so I'll uh, be coming down here, putting that big sky in. Just want to get it kind of nice and wet. Okay. Um, needs to set for a few seconds to just soak in. It takes a little bit of uh, <clears throat> time to soak that in. Um, but I'm going to use my uh, Cad Blue and my uh, I'm going to use my one inch 
flat brush here, nylon brush, and get me some nice little wash of ultra blue. And uh, I'm going to come up here and start in the top and just sort of put a nice soft wash across here like this. Leaving a little, a few holes in there for some, uh, oh, getting away from me there. Painting around this lighthouse. Actually, that's all really fairly dark, so I can probably just go over that whole thing right there. I think I will. There. Um, out here, some of this I can go over because I will be having the uh, parts of that lighthouse um, will be going over the, the paint that's on the paper and uh, it'll be darker so it will stand out. Um, let me just continue down here like this, come down this side like this all the way down. around my little flag pole here, my flag, leave some room for it. Um, over here on the other side I'm going to make it maybe a little bit lighter in some areas. It's really kind of light. There's some nice white clouds in here. Um, that water dries very quickly when I have this uh, thick paper, which I use. Uh, I didn't tell you the paper we're using. It's a uh, Fabriano Artistico, 300 pound cold press, and um, so I kind of like the way some of that looks up there. I'm going to leave it, I think. Come back and soften a little bit of this. Sort of put a few things in the here like this. Keep it soft. Just leave enough cloud in there to It's all white. You want to kind of stay away from it after you touch it once and uh, just let it get soft. Mm. Area down here might need just a little more touching up. As long as the paper is wet, this will blend and not leave hard lines, but if the paper gets dry, then you have to you go back and wet it or somehow fix it up. Um, all right. Um, it's going to be dark, dark there. Okay. All right. I think that's got it. That's enough for the sky. Left a little bit of white place there that uh, kind of looks like the top of a cloud might be there. So that's the sky. Now this uh, water level back here actually has more green in it. It has a uh, greenish tint to it. And uh, thinking, I'm going to use my ultra blue again, but I'm going to put some satin green in there and see if I can get the uh, get a color that has more. Uh, green to it uh, for this lake lake water. This is uh, around one of the Great Lakes in Michigan, and uh, well, let's see what this looks like here. Mm -hmm. Could be dark.
darker a little bit. Actually, I kept it light in my value mat. Okay, something like that, and then over here we'll just put a few, it's going to be trees over here anyway, so I'm going to just sort of leave a little bit of a room for my flagpole here. And just strike it off like that. Okay, so that's that part of the water. We've got some more that's over the top of the buildings over here. It's got uh, not quite enough green in there, but let's put a little more. I'm going to leave some white paper back there to look like there's a few uh, ripples, maybe some. I'm using this huge one inch brush. So it's going to go all the way down between here. Whoops, I think I'm painting over the roof of the house. Sorry about that. It stops right here. Yeah, all right, there we go. Get lost in here sometimes. There's the bottom of the water right there. Okay, so I left room for my chimney over here. And uh, my water over there. All right. Hopefully, I'm uh, not over overstepping the video, getting in front of it. But uh, it's, sometimes it's hard to do this without getting almost right in front of it. Put a few more darker uh, values in here to sort of give me a bit more of the ripple effect of some of the water out here. Over this way, we're going to just throw in some more. This is going to be pretty well covered up, so I don't really care too much what it looks like over here. But over here, where you're going to see it, I want it to look like some water that might be coming into the shore here. There's the bank. All right, that's my water, that's my sky. And this over here is going to get all repainted over with trees, so I won't worry too much about it. All right. Water is done. Sky is done. Let's see if we can get to work on this uh, lighthouse, maybe. Get me a, get a round brush and see how that's going to work. Um, this lighthouse has got Shows some of the, it's got some really dark, dark in it. So I'm going to get my uh, neutral tin out and uh, add my blue to that and add my crimson to that, crimson lake. And neutral tint, crimson lake, blue, and even a little bit of my uh, uh, Kubrick green up here. Those three colors will really give you a dark, dark, dark black. I also have lamp black on here I could actually use if I wanted to try to use that, but I'm going to uh, try to stick with just these colors that are in my palette and uh, see if we can put a top on this guy back here. This may be too big a brush, I don't know. Okay. 
Okay, there's that little dome. Then we have uh, another part that comes out like this. Kind of like a top hat almost. Um, then this area behind is a little bit lighter, slightly lighter. I don't know if that's light enough. that and now we're going to go to the section here it's really dark try to make it uh, got um, section that comes down and really really that and sort of blend it here with just some clear water myself a sort of a highlight over here there all right um, now we still have another very dark section below this supposed to come down almost straight like that there it sticks out over this I'm not talking too much on thinking, folks. Same deal here. Take some clear water and just sort of blend it together a little bit. Leave a few highlights in there. There we go. That's maybe a little too many highlights. Let's darken up a little bit of it here. All right, there we go. All right, that's the top. I don't have the railings on up there yet. I'll have to put those on later with a much smaller brush. All right, now, so as we come down with this thing, I'm going to start picking up some uh, more of this neutral tint, almost neutral tint and clear water. Get some of the green out of my brush and just see if I can put in a few of these uh, there's a, a dark thing here and there's some shadows here mm -hmm. brush is too big I'm gonna have to get a smaller finer brush here um, sort of a Shadow. These are like raised areas that have, these are like welded 
or plates are like welded on here. Um, so I'm just sort of hitting, hitting and miss, hit and miss some of this. Um, so this is really kind of white on, just dark on white here. Okay, then below that they get really dark again. I think that's right. We got one, and then we got two, three, three. Starting with the fourth one. This is where it really gets dark again down here, so I'm going to uh, pick this up and it's almost like a tic-tac-toe type thing or something where you have every other white and black trading off. This goes all the way down to let's see, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. That goes all the way down to here. So well, these have the same kind of welded plates, they're just painted black. And uh, So let's just do that and kind of put in some lighter colors here, lighter values I should say. some of this before it gets dry. I don't want a hard edge there if I can keep from it. A little bit of a blossom going there. Okay, come back and put some more dark in here. So we're getting some nice shape. This should be a little straighter here than doesn't have to be perfectly vertical, but it should be a clear line of shadow versus light. So let's kind of clean that up a little bit. Um, all right, so now we got more white down here. So all this really has is those. Uh, let me get my smaller brush here. This just has these uh, welded plates and shadow on here. Something like this. Like that. Some interesting little things going on there. Um, down this edge here, I think it's even a little darker in some areas. So I'm going to put just a little bit of down here, since it is really dark, but it's also wet, so I can kind of help merge that in with uh, a little bit of clear water. Yeah. Like that brush, let's use this brush. There we go. 
So I just soften that edge by putting some clear water on it and it will soften right into what's there. All right. All right. I think maybe I'll just put a... There is a touch of shadow on this side of the lighthouse. Ah, outside the line there just a little bit. Something like that. Same thing going on down here, slightly shadowed. And we'll just use clear water to finish that off a little bit more right in here, there. Clear water. see a line kind of going down here to show the curvature should be close to about the same there we go okay so now I have a little bit of a shadow that gives me the three-dimensional look I was trying to get and uh, I don't know if I can get this little blob around it there or not it's uh, I went right outside the line, went right into my cloud. But these brushes, I didn't tell you, these brushes that uh, I have from Sterling Edwards, they all have a almost like a bristle. This has a hard, uh, almost like a bristle, bristle edge, and it picks that paint up uh, fairly nicely. All right, let's see. I think I got that out of there. There we go. I don't know if you can even see that, but I kind of fixed that mistake. I've got something going on in the paper right here. I don't know if I scratched that with my finger or whatever, but I don't really like that, the looks of that. Um, if I get in there and mess with it, I'll probably make it worse. But uh, Okay, let's see. Let's go back now and start looking at this building. We've got pretty much, pretty much got that um, lighthouse body all pretty well done. hard edges I want to soften out there okay all right I gotta put gotta remember to put some uh, railings up there in a minute and I don't forget that um, so this roof is a interesting rust rusty color I'll get my cad red out here and my burnt sienna and see if I can find a color that's close to that roof. There's a couple, three colors in there. Um, come on, give me some. I want to put a little bit of burn number in there somewhere to darken things down even more. That will give me a little bit of a rust, rusty color. And it goes, I'm going to get that flat brush. I don't want to use my, that brush I don't think I want to use that. I'm going to use my flat because I want a nice edge on this roof here. And it's going to go all the way down to there. So that's, it's not nearly dark enough. Some more dark here, some more. Burnt, a little more red. Okay, let's get her going here.
I'll change that color up a little bit, put a little something else in there to kind of change the flavor of it. Put a little some of my blues in there maybe and pick up a little of this. Gonna be darker down here anyway, I think. It should be darker. I'm making it lighter. <laughs> oh, put a little put a little my purple in there, my uh I can make it a little darker. Bottom. Yeah, that's a nicer color. All right, so that gives it a little bit of a change of value and change of color. Right here, we're going to do this, and it's going to go up in here like this. There is a, uh, a dark eave on that house. Right in here. I'll leave a little white in there to kind of help break it up. here like this over here like this this little flat brushes are really great for this folks uh, doing anything with architectural elements you want to uh, try to use a brush that is got as much uh, ability to paint those angles as you can get um, And these flat half inch brushes do the do a nice job. Okay. There's that part of it. <clears throat> okay. That's pretty decent. Let's put another section of roof on here. It goes up like this. And it's going to come down on the other side on top of this little white eave. It goes all the way out like this and down. There we go. All right, that's pretty much the top of that roof. Got another little section of roof here that I want to uh, hit before I get rid of this, but it's like right in here. decent. Um, I'm going to go back and get a little bit of my I think any more of this green water that come water color here that's almost too dark. I'm going to fill this out above this roof here. Throw a few dark, darker sections there. Since I got it in my brush, I'm just going to go highlight some of these areas and throw that in. Okay, kind of finishes that off. All right, now I 
do have a uh, chimney here that's got a little top on it like this and it's got a color that's kind of like the roof here on the side fill that in there and then the rest of that I think I'm going to just leave it it is kind of white it does have a shadow side on it so uh, maybe I'll put that shadow side on now and it'll help define it maybe a little bit better here here A little bit of detail here, folks, kind of tedious, but um, there. Okay, I think it looks like a chimney sticking up there. All right, now my uh, grass and my trees, I don't know if I want to get in those trees yet or not. Um, actually, I could come down and put a nice wash um, over that building. Um, I'm going to use my neutral tint again and just sort of go over the whole thing except where it's really, really white. Um, all of this is up here, same deal. All this is in a bit of a shadow, a very slight shadow, not much, but just enough to make it uh, obvious. So I'm just trying to fill this in, add some water, thin it down, blend it together. All of this is a little section of white on the side of this building here that I'm going to leave. Um, And a little section of white up here that I'm going to leave. There, that kind of gives the flavor of this building. Just going to soften it off so I don't have hard edges sitting there because I'm going to put the grasses and stuff below there. Okay, so there's pretty much the front of the building finished. Um, I guess I had some on the other side there that I didn't finish off. There we go. All right. And um, there's a section down here on this part that sticks out from the building is in shadow right here. And I have a roof on there that I didn't put on, so let's do that, too. Soften that edge up so it's not hard edge. You don't want it sitting there hard. Okay, okay let's get this section of roof on this guy right here. Darker. some more of the red in there. Okay. All right, now that's the big part of the structure. I've got some fine details to put in here with the windows and stuff. But um, you can kind of see where that's going. get the uh, crimson red and uh, see if I can come in here and throw in a that followed by a few little 
blue things at the top here, some stuff there. That. And a bit of a ball up here. And down this pole is the uh, same kind of thing. It's got some light on one side of it, dark on the other. It's kind of hard to do that, but let's put in a I might make that pole darker instead of lighter. Maybe a better way to do it, show it up. Got some sky that needs to go back in here. There he is. So let's just blend that together. Soften it up a little bit. Get a bit of a run there. Just a little bit of bluish there. I'm going to put some trees over there. Some, some, yeah, some trees over that. So it's not going to be too big a deal. But you see, when you start messing with those skies, you end up with more problems than you need. Picking up some other colors in there, you see. So I don't particularly like that, but that's what we got to deal with. So let's see if I can soften that off a little bit right at the top there. That might help. Yeah, there we go. All right. Now, I don't know how we're doing on time. I've lost track of my time, but um, got a bunch of tree uh, branches and stuff in here. I got some sandy areas back here. See if we can work on some of that sand and get some of that uh, put in. What are we going to use for sand? I don't know. Ochre? Yellow ochre? Actually, I have a raw sienna that has a sandy color when you lighten it down, lighten it, uh, put a lot of water in it, and it gets a nice sandy looking color. sand in there. Might as well go ahead and put more of this in since I got it going in the brush. I'm just using uh, raw sienna and water here. Throw it up in here like this. Come back and get me a brush full of water. Sort of start blending it more. I can 
and darken that up more, but I just want to get some base color in there uh, for the sand. And that sort of did it. I always put more color in there from over here, like this area needs to be a little bit darker. And this area could be a little darker. It looks like some sand dunes and some grasses sticking up. up next to the house here there, or what you see in front of the house looks darker because there's a bit of a shadow there, I think. This is really a shadow here. It's a big pile like a dune right here, sand dune. And to make sure it doesn't have sharp edges, you just come back with some water and dilute it down a little bit. There we go. All right. Now then, where are we? Maybe it's time to work a little bit on this building with some dark... Uh, see if I can get in some of those windows. Um, those windows are just about the width of my brush here. This half inch flat. <coughs> Come in and just sort of put in a. I'm gonna put my hand on there where it's too. It's still a little bit wet around those down there, I think. like this. Down here there's a big couple of windows here. Throw in some other colors maybe. in there that's got some stuff going on in behind it. Okay. Got a few little things that look like there might be some uh, grapes or something in there. A few scrapes. It's too soon probably to scrape that out. It's going to leave a dark mark probably. All right. Um, a little bit of a dark shadow in here that sort of highlights this eave. Runs down this way. Like that. Just a little bit up here on this eave. And this one over here. It's helping to highlight those uh, eaves and make that stand out a little better. Through here we got some shadow. Along here. Just giving a little bit of a highlight. Or a shadow, I guess. I should say, not a highlight, a shadow. Uh, to define these things just a little better. A little shadow under these windows here, maybe. Like this. Shadow over there. All right, I think that's telling the story of that building pretty well. Got another little window here that's got a you can see the sand through this window.
which I didn't paint back there, so I'll throw a little bit of sand in there now and see if that works. A little bit of color and just mush it together. Got some dark area down here. Like that. Now we're getting close to the shadows of these trees that are over here that I haven't painted in yet. Um, but they're going to be nice and dark. And this whole area right in here is going to be some dark shadow. And the trees. And there's a few dark shadows in this area right in here. Dark, a little darker than what I had. So I want this to sort of look like we've got stuff coming down here like this. I want you to just make sure you see this as a, a sand dune that's uh, laying there. All right. All right, let's look at these trees now, see if I've got some. Things I can throw in for tree trunks and stuff in here. I've got to throw in some things that look like this. You know, merge with the uh, shadow down here. And I think I want to take my round brush and see if I can get some uh, green. What am I going to do for green? Let me pick up some of this uh, ochre and uh, yellow ochre and some blue. Some of my uh, raw sienna and my blue. Should be able to get some nice greens out of that. All right, we got them all over the place here. We got them. The brush is a little bit too wet. Take some of the paint out of it, let it just touch like this. I want it to go behind this flagpole if I can. Just go up on the other side. There's a lot of air holes in these, which is fine. Throw them in there really fast and get in a lot of dark. Need some more dark in there. And yeah, down here we want some dark because it's more in shadow. There we go. Above more ochre and blue. this flagpole and try to uh, highlight it by painting around it. This side the same way. Okay, getting some Nice darks come back and hit it again with some other darker values. And uh, I really didn't have to paint that flagpole again. I'm just leaving it, leave it as it is. Okay, there's that. Got some really nice darks coming down here. I'm going to throw in some of that down here on the ground to make it even darker. Be really 
way, kind of shadowy down here. Okay. How are we doing? How are we doing? I think I'm getting very close to being finished. I want to put those uh, railings on up the top. I'll leave those to last and see if I can... Uh, Finish those off. I'll get my script liner here. I think that's what I need for those. And um, I think I'm going to... Oh, there's a few more trees. I Well, I've got my paintbrush out here with my trees in it. I forgot some trees on the right side. i got my trees over on the right side. Let's go get some of those and put them in. Keep uh, water out of the top of the brush like that and just sort of just need more yellow in them. Some more ochre in there, brighten it up a little bit maybe. different color green than's in the photograph, but uh, I didn't want to bring out another yellow necessarily. I could have brought in my limon yellow or one of those other yellows, but uh, I don't think this painting needed it, and I wasn't particularly crazy. I'm going to put some of that same color, this ochre color, on the left side to kind of tie these trees together from the right to the left so you see the the difference there, you see it sort of helps the balance. It's hard to see on the camera, I can tell. If I threw in some really bright yellow, you'd be able to see it, but I'm just putting in some pure ochre here. It looks fine here on the, what I'm looking at, so. There we go. All right, time to do our These little railings up the top. I think I'm just going to use pretty much neutral tint. Neutral tint to get it nice and wet so I got a nice point. And um, where have I got them? I've got them here. Like this. I go around. Like this. back side. You can see the back side of them. Got another railing up down there below it on the next level down here. Goes back in behind. Ah, there we go. This is, has a little bit of a... Alright, see if I got any more places that need some more attention. That didn't need that much attention. Alright, um, maybe just a few little uh, flicks to outline a few of these windows here. Maybe to outline this side of this. Chimney. If I mess with it too much, I'll be uh, ruining it. So uh, I don't want to do too much. I'm going to come in here and do just a little bit of my splatter. Get plenty of water in this thing. And splatter into this sand dune here. And maybe some over this way. like that. It helps to uh, break that up. Probably could 
put in a few, just a few uh, things that look like we got some structure, something holding these things up over here. Same with this. I didn't really run these branches up into this thing that much. But um, put a few in there to help uh, give it some. We know we got something going on in there. Could have tried to scrape something out. It's probably too wet, but uh, oh, there's a few white scrapes. I don't know if you can see them that well, but there's uh, they showed up on this paper of mine. All right, folks, I'm going to say I hope you've been staying with me with this. I hope you like it. I hope you give it a try. Put my name in here somewhere, about right in here. hard sitting down. I'm not used to painting sitting down. But my leg is just about healed. I'm ready to get back on my uh, regular painting schedule. Should have just a few before I forget. Maybe just a few things in here to help. Grasses. Some few grasses and things in here that can Make it look a little more realistic. There are some grasses along here. Yeah, there we go. I think that helps it. Yeah, that's better. All right. Okay, folks. I'm going to uh, zoom back and say thank you for watching. I'm glad you were here today and I hope you like this painting. Hope you give it a try and uh, let me know how you do. Leave me some comments and uh, subscribe if you're not a subscriber. Check out my Facebook page. Check out my website. The uh, sketches for this uh, painting will be on my, webs on my website uh, by the time you see this. So you can go out there and get the uh, value map, the original photo and the sketch. And uh, hopefully you can give this a try and uh, see how you do. So I think that's all I want to tell you today. So until uh, I see you again, this is Larry Hamilton saying so long for now. Bye-bye.